banker and learn who your class enemies are. Stop wasting your time with this right-wing anarchist anti-government blather. Start learning the faces of Pandit the Bandit, Jamie Dimon, Blank Fine, Mac of Morgan Stanley, Ken Lewis of Bank of America, because that's who owns and runs Obama and the U.S. government, along with some others. Now, the past week was kicked off with this bankruptcy of Capmark, a quite large real estate firm, commercial real estate operation, $200 billion of uh, material there gone bankrupt. So it means now the commercial real estate crisis is here. The other jitters that have also continued today is this uh, other uh, lender that we've talked about, CIT. CIT, a commercial lender, a kind of non-bank bank, if you like, they provide the credit that moves goods to retail shelves, right? especially uh, clothing and other retail items, as well as things like Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, every time merchandise moves, a bill of exchange is generated, a bill of lading. That's got to be discounted with somebody. Somebody, You want to get your money right away to meet the payroll, and then the company that receives the goods is going to pay CIT later on. That is now on the verge of bankruptcy. And again, the studied indifference of Geithner, Bernanke, Summers, Volcker, um, and the rest of these characters is overwhelming, right? They say, well, derivatives contracts have got to be, have got to be honored with uh, Deutsche Bank and Societe Generale and all those foreign derivatives mongers. But when it comes to, to uh, maintaining hundreds of thousands of jobs in the retail sector, the answer is no. <coughs> I would say seize CIT, nationalize it, cut out the derivatives, and run it, and keep the goods moving, and keep jobs in this country. Claw, claw back that money from those foreign zombie banks. Uh, we could seize the assets here of Societe Generale, uh, Barclays Bank, Deutsche Bank, uh, and uh, and the rest of them that we've just been talking about. We could seize their assets, and maybe that would uh, balance those billions, those it's $32 billion. I, I would not have given them a penny, not one red cent for derivatives. Derivatives get triage. So there's also worry about CIT because Goldman Sachs owns a piece of CIT. Uh, the other thing that's going on today in this uh, market uh, turbulence on the, on the devil's night is the financial stocks are getting slammed. Uh, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, down 3% each. How about this? Metropolitan Life Insurance, MetLife, losing 7%. They were coming up with a loss of $620 million, uh, for one quarter. Um, this is uh, resulting from derivatives once again. Derivatives are causing the losses. So uh, isn't that interesting? And, and uh, right now, Goldman Sachs is trying to find a way to drive CIT into bankruptcy and, uh, and save itself. There are rumors that there's some dirty deal being made. But now, now let's look at the underlying thing. Um, there is now this dollar-dow trade-off that you see in the market, right? They move in opposite directions. It's clear that there is now a dollar-carry trade a carry trade is when you borrow money at 0%, which you can now do in the U.S., and then you take it abroad. Now, this, this is one of the things that's helping to drive down the dollar, because when you take that money abroad, you're selling those dollars that you've just borrowed for 0%, and you're buying euros, yen, or indeed the currencies of places in Eastern Europe, Turkey, uh, the so-called emerging markets, right? They're very uh, volatile and highly speculative ones. Now, this seems to have something to do with the fact <clears throat> that whenever the dollar goes up, the stock market goes down and vice versa. It looks to me like some of these carry trade artists are keeping dollar balances parked in the stock market, and then when they need to cover, if the dollar goes up, they've got to cover some of their carry trade commitments. They've got to provide more margin, I guess. So what they do is sell stocks, and you can see that CNBC this afternoon has been showing you a chart where the whenever the dollar goes up, the stock market goes down, and vice versa. And of course, the tendency of the dollar has been uh, has been down. Now, 
The other thing we're getting as we uh, go into the Halloween uh, weekend, the Treasury said, and, and the Federal Reserve above all, said they announced uh, back in, um, in uh, August, the Federal Reserve said that they, as part of their strategy of quantitative easing, they were going to buy 300 billion of Treasury securities, that is, support operations for the bailout, the stimulus, the supplemental, right, this huge wave of, uh, of spending, most objectionable being the bailout for Wall Street hyenas. So 300 billion were going to be bought at the Treasury auctions by the Fed. And they said that that would stop by the end of October. These, these, uh, statements were made back around August 12th. So now it is the end of October. And presumably now next week, the Fed will not be coming out in force at the Treasury auctions. This past week we had an, a record borrowing of 125 to 130 billion by the Treasury. And this, according to the bid to cover, uh, seems to have been relatively routine. No big uh, problems that we can see except, well, except what we're seeing now today. Uh, what's going to happen next week and beyond when the Fed is no longer buying at such a clip, they say. In other words, we don't know what they're going to do because they're secretive and they lie. So that is now opening the door to, uh, to well, two scenarios, basically, for the, for the collapse of the dollar. One scenario for the collapse of the dollar, as you know, is that some uh, – money manager in Kuala Lumpur wakes up one morning and says, we're a little bit heavy on dollars, let's sell a hundred million or so and lighten up. And that uh, grain turns into a huge cascade so that by the time the world turns and the uh, markets in New York open some hours later, it has turned into an absolute dollar panic with everybody trying to dump their dollars. And they're all watching each other to see if anybody makes a sudden rush for the exit. That is one scenario for dollar collapse. The other scenario for dollar collapse is you have a treasury auction of the type that we've had this week with a large amount of stuff being dished up to investors, and it fails. Fails meaning that they don't get to sell everything that they want to sell, or they have to do it at such a high uh, interest rate, such a, such a low price, and therefore high interest rate, that this it, it creates a situation of panic. Now, that happened to the British. There was a guilt auction of the British uh, government debt back in March, which failed in those terms. What happens now if a Fed auction, uh, if, sorry, if a Treasury auction fails in part because the Fed is not showing up, they claim, or really because the Chinese and others are not showing up? Now, this underlines the danger to the dollar, and remember, Hyperinflation does not start inside the economy. Hyperinflation starts in the foreign exchange. When you get a collapse of the dollar, minus 20%, minus 50%, minus 70%, whatever it is, since everything in this country is imported, all manufactured goods pretty much are imported, the prices of those will go sky high if the dollar collapses. It will take more dollars to buy the uh, clothing from China and, and Hong Kong and so forth that you're used to buying, that will be hyperinflation. So that is the terrain that we're now in. The other example is uh, Barron's is calling for the Fed to raise interest rates to 2%. We'll talk about that in a minute. Back soon.